electric fractal. And that's the, the physics of how the ancients built Stonehenge to make a capacitor to increase growth and, uh, and eliminate or reduce aging. <clears throat> Here is a measurement of the conductivity in water in response to being pr placed in the center of the phase conjugate dielectric. The point I'm making is that phase conjugate dielectrics, these fractal capacitors, are bioactive. They create growth, and we can apply this commercially with the technology we have available now. So in this recent article, we took that same frequency recipe here. <clears throat> I used this equation here you see on the left, the Planck time constant <clears throat> times multiples of the golden mean ratio you see here, and I got the frequencies whose array I used, which was confidential, but I, that's the recipe I used to make the array to make these bioactive electric fields. So I had the insight to take that equation and apply it to what this famous uh, Professor Kansius used, which was the sputtering frequency of palladium, and he discovered that he could use that frequency recipe, 13.56 megahertz, and he could zap hydrogen, and the wattage, the power it took to split hydrogen out of water, was dramatically reduced, meaning that this was the recipe for hydrolysis in the end of the energy crisis, and all of the newspaper articles were called burning water. And Rustam Roy picked up this idea, and it became famous, and we now realize that hydrogen is a frequency recipe, which we're going to talk about more in a moment. So I took this frequency, and I proved that Kansius's palladium sputtering frequency for hydrogen was simply a log function of golden mean ratio, 171, times the Planck time constant, which means that the musical recipe for hydrogen and palladium is based literally on this stellating golden ratio nest of Planck. So this is what it would look like if we look here. You see these, these pictures? This is how the golden mean ratio waves look as it converges and nests in the center of this golden ratio stellated dodeci cosa nest. See these pictures? So that's what waves are doing on their way into the center of hydrogen. And if you want to lock into their music and get access to that energy, you need to understand that geometry. So that's a little black hole connecting to a big black hole. Remember all these physicists today, like Nassim Haramein and uh, the punk physics story, they're talking about all of physics being little black holes and big black holes. So I had this news now that hydrogen was based on golden ratio musically from Kansius's work. So I decided that I would test my hypothesis. My hi hypothesis is here, was that gravity is an electric field coupled by golden ratio being a definition of perfect charge collab collapse at universal quantum distances. I say again, gravity is an electric field coupled by golden ratio at quantum distances. So perfect charge collapse is golden ratio phase conjugation or fractality. So if I'm right, then the charge collapse that enables gravity is what establishes the structure of all the atomic table. Let's start with hydrogen. How do we prove that? So I hypothesized that golden ratio, the already known three golden ratio radii in hydrogen that Heyrovska had published, and we'll look at that in a moment, I hypothesized that the, the key radii in hydrogen should be golden ratio multiples of the Planck length. And so I did the calculations to prove it. And later, Sal Giandonota was kind enough to help me confirm that. So here we, I took the Planck length, 1.616 times 10 to the minus 35 meters, times the golden ratio, and then powers of the golden ratio. Here, golden ratio is the 1 16th power. And I got 0.28 angstroms, the first radio, radii in hydrogen in Heyrovska's work. And then the next power and the next power, 117 and 118 powers of golden ratio times Planck, gave me the other two radii, 0.47 and 0.74, angstroms, the radii in hydrogen. So I was able to confirm by calculation from the theory that golden ratio times Planck equals hydrogen to the actual measured, all these papers here by Heyrovska, which is beautiful work. He has dozens of papers here on the golden ratio in the key radii in hydrogen and ion radii and ion bond lengths and, and the, the, ionic, the ionic centers distances at, expressed as ratio. 
So Hayrovska has a whole lifetime of work here showing the importance of golden ratio in the spacing of hydrogen and ions. And I took that and I showed that golden ratio was the key in relating that to the Planck length. So suddenly the subquantum distances, the, the, the wavelength at the core becomes the key to hydrogen. And we're saying to all the other atoms of the atomic table. And that's what we come to next is all those papers we wrote <clears throat> at goldenmean.info slash creation to apply that and say that atoms here will make gravity to the extent that their inside is like their outside or self-similar. So we're saying this perfected charge collapses the cause of gravity. And another proof then would be that if we look at, and this is our unified field conference in, uh, in Budapest, but if we look at the atomic table and we look at the, the fact that the nesting of the electron shells are basically the platonic solids nesting. But if we look at that in more detail, here's the electron shells in their geometric platonic nest, the S suborbital being basically a donut in a ring, the pi suborbital being cubic, and the D and F suborbitals, 5-7 vortex pairs, 10-14 electron, being dodeca ecosa in their essential symmetry. So now I've got the simple platonic solid, we call it star mother nest, tetra cube dodeca ecosa, as the geometry of all the electrons shells, S, P, D, and F. Now if we look at the nucleus from Moon's work in chemistry, University of Chicago, we see that the geometry of the arrangement of the hadrons in the nucleus, proton, neutron, that their geometry of all the, ato the atoms in the atomic table is either tetra cube, octa, or ecosa. So what he said is the geometry of the nucleus is the same platonic solids. So suddenly now we realize that the nucleus is self-similar to the electrons. So that leads us to this radical uh, statement summary synthesis, which is that atoms make gravity to the extent that their nucleus is self-similar or fractal to their electrons. In other words, atoms can only make gravity if they're fractal too, all based on perfection of the golden ratio. So finally in this discussion, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the E8 story. So 